because this was such a critical moment, we turned off all the science instruments right now. When can we expect some science coming back? Uh, a couple of days from now, we'll turn the instruments back on. But our first orbit is 53 days long. And so we come back to Jupiter with all our eyes and ears open the next time. As of last evening, 1047 local time, uh, the spacecraft did go into safe mode, so the science pass uh, was not performed today. All the instruments were turned off as part of the safe mode. Can you uh, talk anything more about what the spacecraft reported that caused it to enter the safe mode? And then can you say anything about the results, um, any science results? So the data is still being looked at and trying to be understood, so I can't really... Uh even take a good educated guess as to what caused it yet. I mean, we've, we're, we've been able to uh, make sure the spacecraft was safe. We've changed the, the data rates to a higher rate so that we can get the data down and analyze it. But I think it's too early to take a guess as to what caused it. There are still an amazing number of basic questions that we don't have answered about Jupiter. And that's because it's hard. We have flown through the Jupiter system before, uh, four spacecraft, uh, none of them can hold a candle to what Galileo will do. Just 18 months after launch, disaster struck. Galileo's umbrella-like radio antenna failed to open. It was beyond devastating. It had, it, ha it had to open. Back on Earth, NASA engineers scrambled to fix the problem. There were uh, attempts to jolt it open. They thought perhaps it had just gotten stuck. There were attempts to, you know, kind of go up and down, you know, and try to get it to open. The, the spacecraft went into safe mode last night, uh, so I'm going to address that. And, of course, uh, the delay that we had um, for our rocket firing, which was originally planned. And then I'll go into the fun stuff, the science. Well, Juno's instruments and camera were turned off five days ago to protect them during this maneuver. That means there will be no new pictures tonight. Um, the spacecraft went into a safe mode. What that means is that the spacecraft, uh, it's like a smart robot, has a very smart computer on it, detected a condition that was not expected. It did exactly what uh, it was supposed to do when it detects a condition that's not expected, is it evaluates the situation and then takes an action. And in this case, uh, it turns off unnecessary uh, um, subsystems. All of the science instruments were turned off about four days ago and right now in our pass by Jupiter for JOI we're not going to get pretty much any science information at all. The, uh, the situation at this point is is where we just passed through Jupiter and the impact was that we shut down uh, our science instruments in order to make sure that nothing uh, unnecessary was being done on the spacecraft as we went by Jupiter. Um, we detected as we were pressurizing the propulsion system, basically we were turning on the, the getting ready to fire the rocket. We noticed uh, a different condition in the, in the valves that actually open up and pressurize the system. Uh, they behaved with a little bit of delay, uh, which meant maybe the valves were a little sticky. There were attempts to, you know, kind of go up and down, you know, to try to get it to open. We didn't want to take any chances that uh, some adverse type of uh, condition would cause the, uh, the burn to go in a way that we didn't expect. And so we decided to postpone and delay that burn. And at that time, we did it early enough that we were thinking that we could turn this uh, flyby into a science pass and get some science. And so we come back to Jupiter with all our eyes and ears open the next time. Of course, the uh, spacecraft uh, safe mode uh, condition eliminated the science. We're not going to get pretty much any science information at all. So we will go in and analyze that, and then once we figure that out, we'll decide um, where to go next. It's a monster. It's unforgiving. It's relentless. It's spinning around so fast, it's gravity. It's like a giant slingshot, slinging rocks, dust, electrons, whole comets. Anything that gets close to it becomes its weapon. Those high energy electrons are going to fry the electronics of the spacecraft if you fly it through. Um, so we went through another set of radiation belts. When will we get the first images uh, from Jupiter? Yeah, 
we turn the instruments on just a couple of days later, but I'm not sure what the schedule is to send down the, the first image after that happens. We'll have to get back to you on that. Then, two months out, there was a disaster. The tape deck used to record the vital data jammed. What they discovered was that this tape recorder, if it would run at very high speed, was prone to the tape actually getting hot and sticky. And so we re-engineered the mission so that we would only use the slow speeds of the tape recorder and we didn't use the whole thing. So that coupled with the antenna really limited the amount of data. Unfortunately, the, the antenna is crippled. It did not deploy successfully and it will be a month or more before we're able to download a single picture. What we found was that we had not set our exposure settings to long enough. We're taking pictures of a cloud right near the shadow. Um, so in a lot of ways, that was a test run for us, Parajob 1, and so now we know you know, how much we have to boost our, um, our exposure time, so. The first flyby on August 27th was not really part of the science mission. We had all the science instruments on, but what we wanted to do was test them, calibrate them, make sure we understand how they work close to Jupiter. And originally, this flyby that, was happen that happens today uh, was designed to actually change the orbit. And when we opted to go ahead and put on these science instruments, it was still sort of to just get extra science. What have you learned so far that you didn't know uh, from the telescopic views of Jupiter? I'm not sure that we've learned any brand new things. We've uh, confirmed many of the uh, ideas that we got from telescopic uh, measurements. Like what? Well, we think the uh, fields, we now have a better idea of the, of the radiation belts. So we have students all over the United States, and in fact all over the world, who learn about science by doing real science. They operate a radio telescope that belongs to NASA. They operate it remotely, and while they're learning science, they're doing real science. Part of the science they've done is observe Jupiter, and that contributes to the Juno mission, so they're effectively members of our science team. I have one of them with me here today. Um, Nadu, if you want to uh, talk a little bit and tell them about Juno, I think that would be a great thing. Uh, yeah. First of all, we are from Chile, so uh, take uh, the control of the antenna from thousands of kilometers to the south is like a, 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 a dream for, for any any person who likes the science and the, and the universe. You know, I, I forgot to say something I want to add. We took a real leap of faith with this um, experiment with the public. The data that we collected on PJ-1, as Candy pointed out, was really a test case. We were using that time to test out exposure rates for the cameras, what are the right ones to use. Can you say anything about the results, um, any science results? So we haven't even really started the main science, so there's a lot more to come.